Thought this would be valuable to you guys as a breakdown of beating 6-1. I'm actually playing somebody who's in our Civil.gg Unbeatable Club Discord, and he runs a really good 6-1, but I'm able to show how we can exploit it and be able to beat it pretty easily. A lot of you guys struggle with 6-1, so hopefully this is valuable to you guys. So immediately, we see him in 6-1. Now, one of the biggest weaknesses of 6-1 or any compressed style defense is that they really struggle at defending any kind of RPO bubbles. Really, like, across the board, they really, really struggle. One of the best ways to defend an RPO bubble against when you're in these compressed defenses is utilizing your outside corner and putting him into like a hard flat, right? Which this works. If I ran an RPO, that would bag it. But if this guy's in a hard flat, then this entire area of the field is being covered by basically this guy or the user. So it's, it's very, very tough to defend and really forces your hands. So that's the first thing I want to do when we're seeing... Uh, these, when we're going up against these kind of 6-1 style defenses, 3-4 odd, um, you know, it kind of changes. Double A gap even can fall into this, where if we're able to call RPOs and just things that really, like, they struggle at defending, we're going to put ourselves at a really nice spot just off of rip and say, hey, we're going to make you have to adjust. We're going to make you have to play, okay? Coming out a bunch tight again. I'm in Packers offense right now, mind you, and we're immediately going to five out. Now, this blitz that he runs is really, really good. Um, and this is just a basic blitz from 6-1, but a lot of times they'll scream through like the A or B gap or sometimes get off the edge. I really don't want to five out it that much. Right there I did, but the issue with trying to five out this style of defense, and five outing basically means when you're setting your tight end and your halfback out, you're not blocking anybody extra, is that everybody's already on the line of scrimmage. So when that blitz comes in, it's just bang, it's there. And you know, you see we go for the five out again. And we run a really nice route. Come on, talk about this in some of the Packers scheme, actually, which is a tight end corner route and a halfback flat. Okay, table, right? Why is this really, really good? Well, if he sends pressure, which I'm guessing he is, so all of these guys are blitzing, bang, 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 right? Everybody's coming at me. We have this guy to defend the flat and this guy to defend the flat. So for these two players to defend a corner route and a table route, what do they have to be in? Literally, this guy would have to be in a hard flat. This guy, would have be, this guy would have to be in a cloud flat. It's just unlikely they do that, plus send pressure. So we run a route combo here that attacks the short, and then attacks intermediate. And we just say, you're not going to put, you can't put defense out there that's going to defend both of those. And what does he do to try to defend it? He decides to man up. He decides to go full man coverage on the left side. Outside corner to halfback, safety to tight end. But corner routes can beat man coverage and we're able to hit that really quick boys if you're a man player who wants to have more fun on the game and win more games if you want offenses that will score you more touchdowns and defenses that will bag even the most annoying of money plays you need to join my website civil.gg where we have over 1,000 active members who are using my exact schemes to dominate in madden according to a survey we did recently 99.2 percent of our members say they have won more games after joining us. And right now you can use code NEWMEMBER30 and get 30% off. The link to that is in the top of the description. You'll get instant access to schemes that will actually start making you win more games. Really good route combo to add into your scheme pretty much every single year where we're just gonna be able to pick apart that side. Now I'm going to double corners. And now I'm starting to do what I should have been doing earlier, which is just blocking my tight end and then sliding away, and I'm also IDing the opposite side, outside backer. So we have block tight end, slide right, and then ID the mic on this outside backer. And this protection does a really good job, for the most part in general, um, against any kind of blitz like this, but a lot against 6-1. Uh, As you see right there, though, it doesn't. And that's sometimes just with protection. Like, this is what I do for the rest of the game, but it does scream right there on me where I'm like, okay. That's awesome. So keep in mind, whenever you have a good, like, th that's why these good blitzers are so good. It's because they consistently find a way to come in against so much. Second inches here, I'm actually going to be a little bit, a little bit greedy. And we're going for a bomb. I'm just going for a little bomb. This time we're able to actually pick up the pressure the same way. And I make a big mistake where I drop back too far in the pocket. That's just a really easy thing to do. <clears throat> Apologies for my voice. That's just a really easy thing to do where... You know, the pressure does get picked up, but I'm a little bit scared of it. And so I just drop back, drop back, drop back. And as soon as you see these buttons go away, it's GG's. And, you know, we almost were able to catch that still, Sun God. If Amon Ra was like six foot three, I bet we actually catch it. But we don't. Third inch or so. I don't hate taking a shot play on second and a short. Just because if you don't get it, 
Assuming you don't go backwards, that's what we can't do. On second and short, you don't get it. Third and short, you have two more plays, you get first down, right? So it's not, it's not too bad there. Now we're going to go back to this, and immediately I get hit very fast. You see how fast that blitz comes in, and that's where I'm just like, I can't five out this. I got to be better. That's where we get into a bad spot where that is a bad play. It's a wasted play, and we can't go backwards. So fourth and nine, let's see what happens here. A little motion out of Moster. We're going to block our tight end more likely than not. Oh, I end up calling a timeout. I was running out of time. Yeah. Can't risk a bad play there. And he's doing a really good job sending the pressure, but he's sending it consistently. Almost every single play he's sending it. And then he's doing a lot of adjusting on the backside. So I don't love this style of defense because to be able to send, to be able to send all these dudes, right? And then not sit in, and then sit in coverage and get stops. You have to do some things to the backside. Where like you might, I mean, you might go a play where you hook curl this guy, deep zone this guy, man up, man up, right? Something like that. You have to get kind of crazy with, their, with your adjustments, which I, I don't love doing, but definitely can work. So keep that in mind. I'm going to audible here. This is a pretty big down. I got to block my tight end, I'm sure. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to block the tight end, and we're going to go to all reliable. This is just post. This is a route combo called post slant. If you look into our, uh, our 10 route combos, you'll see something called post slant. This is that same idea. It's just post post. And it's the exact same thing. Both of these are going to go to the marker. And in my head, what is he doing? I think he's setting pressure. So how is he going to stop a post going this way and a post going this way? He'd have to have super specific defense in the field to do that. I just don't imagine he does. And maybe he does, but it's a risk I'm going to take. We block the pressure. He, he does. I mean, he has solid defense. It's just the pressure doesn't get in. And we're able to go. And now I've also blocked the pressure a few plays in a row. So for me, I'm like, oh, I can block this, right? First and 10, we're going to audible over to the RPO. And remember, for him to stop this RPO, he essentially needs this outside corner to be in a hard flat. That's a super, super specific adjustment. And that either is a hard flat or it's manned up. So he does it. Good job. But you see what I'm saying? Like for that to make that play, <clears throat> that is such a specific adjustment to make where it's just, it's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard to guess right correctly. We're going to go this time, P, but over. End up getting the drag right here. Now, super truthfully, I should not. That's probably not a great play call. He's not pass committing. Had he pass committed, he would have instant sacked me. But he didn't pass commit, so they bit on the play action, thankfully. And, you know, we're moving. We're moving a little bit. I might go. Let's see. I'm curious what I decide to go to here. Um, as I'm running out of time, again, I keep on getting deep into the play clock, which is not good. And yeah, the pressure just, it'll just scream at you sometimes, dude. It'll just scream at you. And you just got to be like, okay. You know what I mean? Finally, I audible over to Tripp's tight end for the first time this game. And really what we want to do here, and he does a good job against it, is, ooh, I tried to. Oh, so what I want to do here is on this right side, right behind my face cam, you guys might be able to see this, is that we're going a flat streak on this outside because for this to get defended, there's only one defender over there, right? So he has to choose, and then we choose wherever he doesn't go. So watch outside corner right here. He bites down, and then he crossmans the safety onto X right here. Now, technically, I have a touchdown right here in the middle of the field, right? And I have this. But with how fast this pressure comes in, I mean, we have two dudes right here. You, you don't have time to make, to go all the way across the field. You have your hot read, and then you have your, your secondary. And if neither of those are there, you got to instantly throw the ball away, right? We throw it up. Uh, no. If we had more space, I think I can make that throw, but we just don't. Good catch by Amon Ra, just out of bounds. But yeah, keep in mind, this has been a hard struggle drive so far for me, and I'm aware of it. We're going to go to one of my favorite route combos as part of the Packers scheme as well. Where on the right side, we're gonna go streak, corner, smoke screen, and then halfback on a Texas out of the backfield. And there we go. It would hit the corner route. And that's just something he's gonna have a lot of trouble defending that. It's just another route combo that's gonna put him into a spot where to defend it, you have to do so much. And that is one of the issues with these 6 1 defenses where you just don't have, you don't have a ton of flexibility, I feel like. Your, your pressure is really, really good, but your coverage lacks. And. I mean, you can get away with it sometimes, but you just can't always do it. We're just going to go stretch right right here. Looking for a hole. Take it up. Raheem Mostert. Touchdown. And there we go. Rough first drive. I mean, honestly, if you're him, though, you are super cool with that. Like, a lot of people immediately, like, check out mentally. They're like, oh, I give up a touchdown. It's over. 
I just had to work super hard for that. So, you know, 13 plays, 88 yards, you know, at four minutes. I'm, if I'm him, I'm saying, okay, like do it for us of the game, buddy. You know what I mean? Like that's really how I feel about that. Let's skip ahead just a little bit to when he's on offense. And uh, I'm coming out in the double safety go or double safety blitz, audibly a DB fire. But now I'm actually starting off setting up double Mabel against him. He did in our first two games, I thought he did a really good job against my pressure. So I said, okay, what if we go double Mabel on him? What if, so DB fire, we have cover two shell. This guy's in a five. This guy's in a 30, 30 yard flat. And let's just make him beat this. Let's just see what he does, right? And we'll see first play here. Let's see what happens. Boom. Play solid enough. Solid enough defense. He tries throwing it off his back foot. He had that corner route open. He had it open earlier, but he just didn't throw it. Throwing it off your back foot like that is scary, but he goes for it. And now you see me. I just changed my coaching adjustments right there. I went from 30-yard flats to now we're going into the blitz. Same look. This is the exact same look, right? Only thing that's changed is I bumped that middle safety back a couple steps just because he's a middle deep blue and they get ran by sometimes. But like, it's a very small tell. And we're setting pressure now. Everything's the same. We're just setting some pressure now. Right, so let's see it. This outside corner, I kind of messed him up. Let's go. We're going five wide now. So I know my pressure should come in. And it does. He throws a quick read. Good job. We tackle him third and one. Cool. We can take a third and one. Nothing wrong with that. He's going to go hurry up. So I got to assume here, in my head, I'm like, I think he might go RPO. He doesn't, though. And he does a good job hitting the flood corner route. He's in the, uh, he's in the Jets playbook. He's in Jets offense right now. I'm going to go back to the DB press. He, I'm, and we're going back to the double Mabel right here. Again, apologies for my voice, boys. Uh, it's a little hoarse. It is. It is. I'm not sick. I just lost my voice, which blows. Let's go. Good, good D, good D, good D. He forces that. That is a hard throw. It's open. That's a hard throw, though. That's the type of throw where I'm like, okay, cool. But yeah, start the second quarter. We're going back to the same idea on defense. This time, though, I mean, he, he's calling good plays. A little trail route from the tight end right there. He's making, he's calling good plays and making good reads right now, which is, which is awesome. He's playing very, very well. This is a tough area of the field to score on. And I'm just going to check into cover three. I want to play some run defense here. So you see me pinch my line. And we'll see. I mean, this is where, yeah, something I do is you may have missed this, but I think he might be calling the bubble. So we man this guy up. So if he calls a bubble screen, this is the bubble guy here. He gets bagged, right? He's going to get bagged. And I cloud, I end up hard fighting my outside, which I don't think I want to do that. Bang. He could try forcing back corner, but he doesn't. And we get throw away. Cool. The reason that double Mabel's interesting is because that specifically isn't part of this double safety go blitz ebook in the multiple D, but it is part of one of our dollar schemes that's on the site. And that's where you can kind of, you know, if you have something you like, you could take something from, you know, August and apply it now. We send pressure, we're able to get them. You are going to leave stuff open, but you want to make them have to force tough throws. And right there, that was an example of it. We send good pressure. Let's go third and 21 now. I'll move him over a step. I'm going to back off my cloud flat. And honestly, I should have moved him outside more. But that's just literally me just hopping on dudes, moving them. Get them to play better. Pressure. Almost a pick. I thought that was a pick. Almost a pick. And again, you, you guys get to kind of see, like, the value of having good pressure. It changes everything, right? It changes literally everything you do. He goes again. I should have called him out here. This is where he goes, hurry up. And my, look at my defense. My defense just gets messed up bad. I have a vert hook right here, hoping to play the, the uh, tight end wheel. He doesn't, though. And that was open. It was good, good play by him. On fourth down, I, I would have liked to see myself call a timeout. But now back in offense, I kind of felt like last drive, I got to feel out what he wanted to do. So I have an idea of what might give him some issues. So we're going to go back to the same route combo right here. We'll pause it. This is exactly the same that is on the site in the Packers scheme, right? And I talk about in that video that if you wanted to, you could block the tight end and angle out your halfback um, depending on what they're doing. And that's what I want to do right here. So let's see what happens, right? If he sends pressure, we should pick it up. We don't, but we have a quick read. Bang. This is why you got to be look your eyes up. Look at this pressure right here. This is really good. Like This pressure is really, really good. But we have a little smoke. Able to throw that instantly. We have two people. Instantly throw it. Bang. Juke. 
able to get good yardage. That easily, for a lot of dudes, is a loss of six right there. Instead, gate him nine. That's huge, 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 huge. Let's see, second and one. I might just go back to halfback table. Yep. Go quick read over there. Yep. And if you look at this, I mean, we didn't get any yards off of it, but look at why. If he's on a flat, who can pick that ball off? Nobody can. And you see me highball it for that reason. Like, it, it's a safe, it's a hot throw, but it is safe. It's that, that ball can't get picked. It just won't. Uh, due to, or literally do the alignment. So just keep that in mind. Give yourself safe options. But now third and one, I'm going to go back to that same play. You can't stop, right? Boom. Didn't really pick up the pressure. And this is where you can see he's making crazy adjustments because look on the left side. We actually have a touchdown to, to Debo. We have a touchdown. I just don't see it in time looking underneath early. Good pressure by him. But we got to start picking this up because I'm not picking this up well at all right now. And it's very frustrating. Very tough to play offense like this. Very, very hard. Fourth and one. I think I'm actually going to motion block right here. I do. Boom. We have RB. We just get a weird throw. And he gets a stop right here. Yeah, we just get a super odd throw on the, on the halfback right there. And he's able to get a stop. So we got to play defense. We're going to come back out. Immediately going to go into the double Mabel, I believe. Let's see if I'm right. Yep. Double Mabel. Let's make him try to beat it. No, Ma Mabel is a great coverage, dude. Something you can easily mix in a lot. And it looks just like I'm setting the pressure right here, to give or take. So he does. Bang. Mabel. D, D, D. Throws that. Sun God. I'm a big believer that these smaller wide receivers get way, 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 way better possession catch animations than these big wide receivers. And the, diff the difference there is pretty big just because, like, it's the difference between a KO or you be able to hold on to the ball. So, I think I like the smaller guys a lot. Send pressure again. There we go. We get the ball right back. And that's, just, I mean, that's a pretty basic coverage. I, that's, that's a very forced throw from, from Yusham. Super forced. Because, honestly... The read right here, I mean, this is the play Y curl, right? The read here is this guy's on a wheel. This guy's on a seam streak. And you actually have the seam. You could have maybe thrown it. I just felt like that was a forced throw. And it was a forced throw in a situation where you're, you're in a great spot because you're, you're tied, but you get ball at half. So it's just a forced throw. I'll take advantage of it, though. Like, that's awesome for me. And that's what a, a lot of dudes do not realize, like, that is a situation where Sham hurt himself. Like, did I play good defense? I played fine defense. But Sham hurt himself a ton right there. And so many people you play will do that. So many people you play will do that. I'm actually upset with myself. Kind of a touchdown right here. You kind of see he's making crazy adjustments. Watch uh, Debo. Watch Debo right here. He just had that guy in a hook. Yeah. We'll take, I mean, a few, few yards is cool, but yeah, I missed the tutty. Going back to that same route combo on the left side. Same route combo, but this time we just have a motion out drag. That, yep, we're going up top. Boom. There we go. We have the corner route as well. But, like, we have found a route combo that he does not like defending. We're just going to go back to it, go back to it, go back to it, go back to it. Right. On the 11-yard line now. This is just a basic stretch. Stretch right. Bang. Try to get busy. Can't get busy. And this is a timeout, timeout, timeout. Call timeout, call timeout, call timeout. I don't know why he doesn't. Because this lets me end the half, right? You got, if you're in this situation, you're him. You get ball half. You want to make sure you get the ball again before half, right? Because I, I have all the time in the world. There's, I'm not rushed at all right here. I want the clock to go down. So you got to burn that time out here. He doesn't though. Now he's under 30 seconds. I'm going to call tight end angle or halfback angle, I'm sorry, which is a really good play. Watch Sun God on here. This is part of the Packers scheme as well, right? We just max proed it. Have B dot to the sideline, third and inches. And look, look at the time. That should have been completed with like 40 seconds left in half. Now it's completed with 17 seconds left in half, meaning that no matter what, he is not, he's going into half losing basically. Like unless I do something stupid and there's not a chance he goes into half winning, right? He's, he's at seven points for the rest of half, which is just like, yeah, a little, a little clock mistake right there, which makes a big difference. It really does. I'm going to go with the rollout right here. We'll see if it works. Rollout, Bo Jackson. Super good user by him, but it's just, it's just too hard to make this play, truthfully. 
where I watch his user because he did a really good job. Ten Hendrix screams across, comes down, and we just are able to stay inside of him just, just a tad bit. And touchdown. But you see, I score a touchdown here with, what, th 13 seconds left. That touchdown should have been scored with, like, 30 seconds left. He should have time to go get three before half. Instead, 10 seconds, you know, we call a couple plays, whatever, nothing happens. And he goes into half down seven. His ball now, but easily, this could be 14-10. This could be 14-14, maybe. And just a slight little clock thing, which makes a big difference. I'm in a great spot now, right? We're up seven. We can get a stop. We're golden. Going back to the double Mabel. I might, dude, I thought he was calling a different play and my user was nowhere to be found. I thought he was calling like this, like a shot, like um, half that cross screen, which has this fade that like beats double Mabel. And so my user just went, you're screaming back. And yeah, I suck for that. I suck for it. We're going back to sending the pressure. Notice how this looks just the same as double Mabel. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Make him make a tough read. Boom. Now, did he have some open? Yes, he had the tight end open. But to be able to consistently make reads with pressure in your face is so hard. Now, something he has not done at all this game, really, is run, do any kind of run game. And right there, again, and he, he's kind of out of his rhythm. He threw it at my user, got inaccurate, threw it at the flat. It, in, that, in, in my opinion, when you're just like, see, if you can like kind of feel yourself struggling to like see very well or like to make the correct read, you got to get the run game going because I have not had to respect the run game at all this game from him. I'm going to go to the read option here from Bud Strong. This one, this does a pretty good job a lot. We'll see if it works here. Handoff, boom, boom, double juke, and we fumble. All right, you got the ball back. If you are him, you just got lucky. You just got a fumble. You are playing, you know, the last drive was bad on offense, right? You made two contested reads. One of them ended up being a pick. What we have to do here is I think we start going RPO. We start running the ball a little bit. Just get yourself going somehow. I think goes to that. Good possession catch. Just barely able to avoid the KO. Good read. Good read, good read. I'm going back to sending pressure again right here. Free safety zone blitz. Let's see, does it come in? Comes in. And again, he's thrown very close to the user, dude. I think, call an RPO. Make me defend an RPO because I am like, Ears back, I, I'm actually being way too aggressive right here where I'm going, okay, run. Uh, I'm going pass, pass, pass. He's calling passes. I'm blitzing, I'm blitzing, I'm blitzing. Call an RPO right here, and you're going to give some yards. Nope, he goes underneath. Nope, nope, nope. God, like, I, I think right there, you got to recognize the situation. I'm going, like, ears pinned back. And it's just, like, kind of slowing down, like, seeing what's happening in the game around you. My, you're, At this point, Sham, your opponent has called – a blitz over and over again. He has, you know, his outside corners are backed off. He's not showing any signs of being able to stop the RPO. And you're struggling. Go to that. We go double Mabel. Good D. Good D. Third and six. He's going to force it. Gets KO'd. See what I'm saying, though? I feel like I get a lot of opponents into situations like this, and I love it where I can literally just say, he's passing. He's passing. He's passing. He's passing. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, okay, easy. Here we go. I go aggressive on this left side. This is a cloud flat. I think set to 30, I want to say. And yeah, yeah. so this is a 30-yard cloud. 30-yard, let me, whoops. We'll go 30-yard cloud, 30-yard cloud, deep middle blue, five-yard curl flat, blitz, blitz. I want to say this is a hook curl, blitz, blitz, blitz. Yeah, this is a pretty aggressive defense. Just trying to get a stop. Because stop here, I win. Like, that's how I feel about it. Stop here. I'm in a great spot. It's very hard to lose this game. Pressure does not come in super clean. He goes <sighs> super close, super close to the user. Really good quick on swerve by him, but really close to the user. And this next play is just upsetting for shame. I actually kind of rage blitz him here where I sign DB fire. It gets picked up. He throws the ball away. He had a touchdown. He had a touchdown right here to the tight end. Good play call. But he, he threw the ball away just because he, he felt the pocket collapsing. It wasn't. Tight ends a touchdown. Bo Jackson. Instead, mistake by him. And that's what I'm getting at. He's just not playing great in offense right now, which happens. The first game we played, I don't think he threw an incompletion. Right now, though, just like isn't clicking. And you got to recognize that and say, instead of trying to beat your head against the wall to make it click, okay, how can I help myself? Right? What can we do to help ourselves out in offense? What can we do to make things easier? And now we're not second at 22. Now we have to pass. You know what I mean? Now we have to be great. I go double Mabel. Once again, 
And mind you, my users should not be these two dudes. These dudes are, they're, they're ass. They're ass. My team's outdated again. Let's go. It goes back to that same play. But we have a 30-yard flat. He doesn't get a good pass lead. Picked off. Yep. Picked off, picked off, picked off. And we get the ball right back. And what are we going to immediately go to? First play. He, can't, he has not shown any signs of being able to stop this play. So we go right back to it. Pressure's picked up. We hit Moster over the middle. Little juke move, little juke move, and he fumbles again. I won't lie. I am shocked that I have not seen two fumbles in a game. I don't know what Mostert's carrying is. Maybe it's really bad, and I might need to get rid of him. I probably will get rid of him, but yeah. So he gets the ball right back. He's at a, again, good spot. He just needs to start making things easier for himself. We send pr pressure, pressure, pressure. Again, like, he can't pick up this pressure. I, man, we, we I literally like the... The moral of the story right now is find a way to make the game easier on yourself or, or make me uncomfortable. Do something that makes, puts me in a tough spot as I blow coverage. So works out. But I do think it still stands, right? Of like he is, we're playing bad on offense right now. He quick snaps me while I'm moving, which is good. But I mean, you got to do something to get me uncomfortable. He's able to tie the game up though. He's able to tie it up 14 to peep. I'm just going to go back to the same play that he can't stop. And look, once again, we're going to have somebody open. We're going to juke move. If I fumble three times, I fumble three times. It, it's whatever. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. If I fumble three times in the game, he, he's got it. He's, I'm going to start asking him what he's doing because he's got it. But yeah, we're chilling. I'd like to see him. I think one of the better things you can do on defense is switch up uh, just a little bit, switch up like what you're calling. And so I'd like to see him go to dollar for a play. Go into something else for a play. It was kind of a weird play call by me, but ends up working out decent. We get past, we get into field goal range now, and I'm going to go bunch wide verticals. I like this. Um, he goes coverage. Good defense. Cool. Throw it away. Oh, no, I launch it. This was so stupid. This was so dumb. This was so dumb. I remember it. Look at this. Dude, watch A. I'm like, oh, my God, that might be a beam. I think it was a touchdown, but we get it inaccurate. Oh, I just launched it. He'll never make that throw. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I totally forgot. Something, again, you just can't do it. So now I've been stopped by me being an idiot, by Mostert fumbling a couple of times, by just, just a bad flat pass. And I'm like, dude, I am trying to lose this game. I am actively doing everything I can to lose. And if you're him, dude, call the, run the ball. Run the ball. You have Bo Jackson right here. Run the ball. Run. I'm not even pinching my line. My line's not even pinched. Run, 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 run right here. He doesn't, though. Boom. I get, an, an, I get a PI, which is even more frustrating. I'm like, dude, are, we, are you kidding me right now? I'm upset at this point. In a final play of the third quarter. Good D, good D, good D. Nothing's there. Going to throw it away. Not the final play, actually. He's going to have another play. Whoops. Two touchdowns, 16 for 25. There's a couple of bad throws. Overall, like, I move my flat all the way in right there. I'm just trying to get him to play a, uh, a drag a little bit better. Snap. What we got? Corner route. Nothing really there. Picked off user. And it's just a really bad force throw. Bad force throw by him. You see again, though, people ask me, how do you defend corner routes? If you send pressure, they don't have time to throw the corner routes. Because this is open, but he throws it too soon. That would have been picked off by Derwin, probably. And then my user's there to be able to pick it off as well. Beautiful. We get the ball right back. And again, you get to see kind of the value of send pressure at people good pressure, and you're going to be able to get a lot of good things going your way. On the flip side of that, though, if someone's sending a lot of pressure at you, you can run RPOs and get them out of it. Really, I need to go back to another bubble screen of some sort here or some kind of bubble. Or we're going to go back to this play, which he struggles stopping. We have the smoke. We throw the smoke. Hey, we're bay. That's the end of the first quarter or third quarter. There we go. Let's go. Next play. First and 10. Five minutes left in the fourth. 14-14 game. And we're going to go back to the little flat route from Curtis Samuel. Or, I'm sorry, Debo Samuel. Quick throw. Got it. Cool. Second and three. You just see, though, like, all the space we have on the outside, they, they just don't have the defense to be able to, the people there to be able to defend it. Boom, we go quick throw again. And to be able to defend this, think about what he's doing. I probably have a streak for a touchdown right here. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Yeah, I do, actually. Had I, he's maining this guy up, so X... X is a potential dot right here. Pass lead up. B is a touchdown if I just start streaking him, which is really what I should have done. 
And then Y is a safe throw because just leverage Y, I can just highball it. It can't get picked off and whatever. Like, cool. But that's kind of the thing with setting pressure where I only have a, a split second to make that read right there. And this pressure is so good where it's just like, bang, here we go. Right? And so what do I do? I go back to this play call. Now, I like to see him start predicting my play call better because he can defend this. I like to see him start, you know, like man this guy up or hard flat this guy, put this guy in a 25-yard flat and put this guy in a half. Like, because you're just giving this up every single play. And at some point, we have to actually take this play away. You know what I mean? Like, we have to. Come okay, and call it again here, third and three. Gets picked up. And we're going to go dot. And I also had the halfback over the middle of the field. Right? Now, the counterpoint is, but Civil, how do I defend this if I want to send pressure like this? Well, that's a weakness of this defense. You just don't have, I mean, you have one, two, and then your user. You have these people here. It's hard to defend that, right? So just something to keep in mind. Where sending pressure, you got to leave stuff open. So if someone's sending a blitz at you and you can pick it up, you know you have routes that are open. You just have to find them. We're going to go back to the same route combo. Left side, corner route. Bang. Catch it out bounds. Just barely. Sun God, I need that one, buddy. Need that one, need that one, need that one. This is weird. He like checked into a different defense for a play. And I literally just called verticals and scored a touchdown. He just checked into like cover three out something else for a second, which was just weird. But quick touchdown for us. So here's his kind of stay alive drive. I think we're going to immediately come out in double Mabel. And again, dude, make me stop the run. He goes to that play flood. It's bagged. Nothing's there. Throws it away. Good throw away. Went out to do anything dumb. But man, make me stop the run. Make me stop it. You know what I'm saying? Because then as soon as I have to stop the run, I can't send the blitz at you anymore. Or it's going to be a worse version of the blitz, right? Something, I'm giving up something to stop the run better. And I don't even know if this game he's ran the ball even maybe one time. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. And he also has bow nose. Motion him out. We're in the double Mabel still. 30-yard flat, 5-yard flat. Boom, three-man rush, nothing really there. Goes to throw that seam. No. And now, third and 10, I'm going to say, okay, let's go send pressure. We're sending pressure. Here we go. Yep, middle third's right there. Cool. Cloud flat, cloud flat. Let's just try to hoop. Let's see, pressure, boom. Pick right at my user. That should have been a sack, honestly, but we end up getting even better. And yeah, first and 10, we're in a great spot. I go run play, get blown up bad unfortunately, but I don't hate. Only reason I don't like hate it, hate it is because we're just getting the clock moving and I just want to go up two possessions. We go this time RPO right, Sun God, able to get a few yards, stays in bounds, which is big. Gets more clock going. Also think about this, end of half, he blew an opportunity where he could have gotten extra three points because of his clock management. So now I'm guaranteed three here. I should only be up four points though, right? So that, that's coming back to haunt him right now. Pocket, decent. Instead of throwing the ball away, we're going to take a sack. That's fine. Keeps the clock moving. And we're going to take three. He's still in this game, though. He's only down 10. Right? His ball on his own 19. 230 left, 227. But you see what I'm saying? By having bad clock management in that first half, by not calling the timeouts, now he's down 10 instead of potentially going to be down seven. So this, you know, the, the chance of coming back is so much different just by that decision earlier. Sending pressure. I'm just going to send pressure every single play. I don't think he has time to throw anything. Send pressure, send pressure, send pressure, send pressure. Bang, pressure in. Boom, quick throw. That's almost a pick. Same deal here. Just going to send pressure, send pressure, send pressure. No reason to do anything else. And to block this, by the way, boys, you want to slide right and ID that free safety. He gets a short low gain. That's fine for me. He should be going hurry up here too, though, because he needs to get the snap off before the two-minute warning. That two-minute warning is a big deal. That's a timeout of his. That can stop the clock. Let's see if he gets it. He does. Okay. Pressure. Pressure. Sacked. See, for the 16, I'm just going to move my cloud flat back so we can get back a little bit better. Send him the cover three. We're just going to send the pressure again. I'm saying, okay, like, here we go. Yeah, we see him move my cloud flat out. That's actually what I want to do the first time. Let's come on. I'm just sitting here. Basic cover three. Basic cover three. See, he does. He picks up the pressure. Good. But the sh like, and we're able to get a pick. Good job, Derwin. The thing with setting pressure like this is watch what happens. Like, watch the offensive line. They collapse and there's disengages, right? Like, this guy's coming free. This guy comes back. Can't really step up. Bang. Have our, our flats back so you couldn't throw that where you wanted to. 
That's good D. And then that ends up being GG's right there. Great game to Shamp. Shamp is actually like very good at the game. The first game, he actually dicked me down. The second game, I was able to beat him. Um, and that third game, just that happened. But I mean, dude, make the game easier for yourself on offense. If you're going to play super aggressive defense, that's fine. But you got to make the game easier for yourself on offense. It's a big rule that I use like constantly when I'm in tournaments is you have to make the game easier for yourself because you're not always going to be playing great where you make every right read, you make every right pass, lead, every right this, every right that. You're going to make mistakes. So if you can just find ways to run, like in this year, RPOs are a great way to do it, where it just makes the game easy on yourself. So you're not making as many, you're not having so many high pressure situations, right? Great game though. Hope you guys got some value from this. Any questions, let me know in the Unbeatable Club Discord. Appreciate y'all. I'm excited to do this every other week, along obviously with our group coaching this week. So let's get it.